Good morning, everybody. This is Shane Blazer, Mayor of Wisconsin Rapids. Just want to welcome everybody to our our briefing this morning. And uh, with that, I would like to introduce Senator Teston. And uh, if he's ready to go. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Blazer. Can everyone hear me all right? Yes. yes all right. Well, I appreciate Senator the Teston. Are you ready? Yep. So I appreciate the opportunity to give a legislative update. I know these have been very difficult times and we're all trying to uh, grapple on what needs to be done to get us back to some sense of normalcy. So I figured I'd start kind of where things are at right now as far as the total number of cases that we've seen of COVID-19. Um, here in the state, we've seen a little over 9,000 total cases, which has resulted in 374 deaths. It is important to note that in the North Central region, which includes several counties in central and northern Wisconsin, including Portage and Wood. Um, we've had a total of 68 cases and six deaths. And I was going to report that we've had zero new cases in the last seven days, but it appears that there's been a new positive case here in Portage County. But by and large, we have been very fortunate that we haven't had the, the surge of cases that other areas of the state, such as southeast Wisconsin and places like Brown County, have faced in the last several weeks. Um, last week, I sat in on a conference call with the Wisconsin Hospitals Association, along with representatives Krug, Vandermeer, and Shankland, to see what our healthcare providers are, are dealing with uh, right here in central and western Wisconsin. Um, as you can imagine, um, people have been generally afraid to even go in to see their doctor, and as a result, uh, many of the hospitals in the area have seen a drop in emergency department visits upwards of 50%. Now, on April 19th, um, the federal CMS stated that hospitals could begin um, to open safely for some elective procedures. Um, as you may recall, shortly at the start of this, the Trump administration advised that hospitals not do any elective procedures and to shut down certain portions of their, their hospitals and clinics. As a result of that, as you can imagine, the revenue stream that these procedures um, provide for our hospitals has been a lifeline, but because they've been unable to do that, our hospitals have been hemorrhaging money. Um, some of our systems in the area have seen revenue losses around 35%. There are a few that are upwards of 50%. And as they forecast looking out for the rest of the year and going into early next year, there are some providers that are projecting losses at anywhere between 100 to 200 million. As a result of that, the the federal government passed uh, uh, an aid bill, roughly 100 billion to help out our hospitals. Now, 50% of that has already been allocated with the hopes that um, the rest is going to be released shortly to ensure that we don't lose our, our hospitals, especially our critical access hospitals that serve rural communities. Next, I wanna to touch on probably the, the one issue I, my office and I know Representative Krug and Vandermeer's office have been getting a lot of calls on and that's unemployment insurance. As you can imagine with the safer at home order with the partial shutdown of the state economy, we have seen a record number of unemployment claims filed to the Department of Workforce Development. Roughly 500,000 Wisconsinites are currently out of work. And as a result, the department has been taking on roughly 300,000 to 400,000 claims per week. Now there is a huge backlog as far as calls go. And I know that's a lot of frustration. There are some people who have yet to receive their initial unemployment check. And we have folks who are out there waiting upwards of six to eight weeks. Believe me, I, I share your frustration. I keep telling people, if you are having a hard time getting through to DWD, Please contact my office, contact Representative Crew, contact Representative, Representative Vandermeer, because what we have been doing, we have been collecting names daily, and then we submit those to the department to hopefully follow up with those individuals and hopefully get them the support that they need. As a result of that, the department is looking to ramp up the number of employees that they have that handle uh, the call center where the claims are coming in. Also, uh, the additional $600 for unemployment insurance from the CARES Act is beginning to enter the state. And that is retroactive and begins on the week ending of April 4th. Now, I do wanna to touch on something that, um, a new story that broke yesterday that highlighted that we missed out on $25 million in federal funds to help with unemployment insurance. Now, to shed some light on that, at the time when the CARES Act passed, there was no guidance coming down from the Department of Labor. And in fact, 
there were no guidelines for these funds until April 30th, which, which was two weeks after we had passed our legislation. Now, it should be noted that under the CARES Act, the, the federal government is sending the state of Wisconsin roughly $2 billion in aid to help cover the cost incurred by the pandemic. Now, that money can't be used to backfill local governments, but other states such as North Dakota have used those funds to backfill unemployment insurance going um, going before um, that money came down. So there is an opportunity, I believe, to work with the administration to fill that hole and make sure people are getting the, the support that they need. Now, prior to the health emergency, the UI fund had a balance of uh, nearly $1.9 billion. Now, yesterday, the Department of Workforce Development issued a report that showed um, at the current rate of around roughly 300,000 claims per week, that fund will be depleted by, um, by October 11. So to put this in comparison, um, the number of claims that the department is receiving on a weekly basis uh, is 194% higher than it was during the Great Recession. If that number drops down to 200,000 claims per week, we can have that fund be solvent through the end of the year. So. Um, we're keeping our fingers crossed because if that fund does get depleted, we are going to have to go to the federal government to um, get support to have them bail us out to ensure that we're providing those benefits to those who need them. Next, I, I wanna to touch on, on state revenue. Um, it seems just like yesterday, we were at the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Dinner highlighting our strong economy, our bounce back since the Great Recession. Um, at the time, Wisconsin was on track to have a $1.3 billion surplus for this fiscal year. Um, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, in the month of April, the state took in roughly $1.1 billion, which was down about $870 million compared to April of uh, 2019. And right now, it's really hard to forecast what our revenue numbers are going to look like since the uh, tax filing deadlines were pushed back to July 15th. Originally, under the rosier projections that we had prior to the health pandemic, uh, the legislature, we were poised to put roughly $190 million into the budget stabilization fund from the general fund, but that's likely not going to happen now. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to receive roughly $2 billion in federal funds from the CARES Act that the administration is going to have wide latitude on to use to uh, help incur the cost um, caused from the, the pandemic. Now, the good news is compared to other states, we still remain in a very strong position to deal with a stalled economy. Um, we currently have roughly $655 million in our rainy day fund that can be tapped into the legislature if needed. But by and large, um, you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to sugarcoat this because we are going to face a significant uh, challenge as we take a look to the future on our next budget. Uh, just yesterday, uh, the state of Minnesota predicted that they are facing a roughly $2.5 billion deficit uh, since the health crisis started, which is why uh, many of us in the legislature believe it's time that we have to start entertaining options on what needs to be done to safely reopen the, the economy. I think by and large, many Wisconsinites took the advice of our medical professionals and the onset of their early safer at home order to help us avoid a, a health disaster and help flatten the curve. And the data suggests by and large that we have flattened the curve here in Wisconsin. And I'm a firm believer that we now have to take the advice of our business community to develop a plan to help us avoid a economic disaster and to develop a plan that takes a look at things regionally as opposed to the one size fits all that we are currently in right now. So to give you an idea of kind of the economic challenges that we're facing right now. So earlier this week, the Badger Institute released a study that showed for every day that this economy remains partially shut down, we are losing roughly $180 million per day. $180 million per day. That is a huge sum of money. Um, to put that locally, uh, that means Wood County is losing roughly $2.4 million a day. Adams County is losing roughly $220,000 per day. And Portage County is losing roughly $2 million a day. Um, that's why we firmly believe, myself and others, that we need to take a look at a regional model. Um, I should note that the governor did release his Badger bounce back plan. And um, when it was released, following some of the guidelines that have been put forth by the Trump administration, 
The one concern that I have with the plan as written is that when you take a look at the gating criteria to open up the economy, they deviate pretty significantly from the Trump administration to the point where um, it's going to be very difficult for us to ever hit phase three where we can get back to um, a more normalized and open economy. That's why right now there are several proposals that have been uh, being drafted and worked on right now from a number of my colleagues and even organizations such as WMC. WMC released the Back to Business Plan, which if anyone is interested, I would encourage you to go to their website. You can take a look. They have a complete slideshow that runs through the, the plan, kind of uh, how it's going to work if it were to be implemented. And they kind of give you a brief synop synopsis of it. Essentially what it does, it takes a, it breaks it down county by county, and it takes a number of different criteria, the number of cases, the number of PPP in a given area, and then also takes that company's NAICS code which is a federal code um, that basically itemizes what that type of business is. And it uses all, all those different variables and criteria to formulate a risk assessment model that would then allow a, a business to know what is the, what is the level of risk for uh, customers coming in who may come in contact with COVID-19. I think there's a lot of merit to this plan. I think it was a really thought out plan. There are some drawbacks to it though. Um, one concern that I have is that if the criteria were to be changed in some way, that it could be used to lengthen the time it takes to safely reopen. There is another proposal being drafted by two of my colleagues, Senator Roth and Senator Strobel, that is more closely aligned with the guidelines that have put, been put out by the Trump administration using that three-phase approach, but then also incorporating the Wisconsin Hospitals Association regions as the sort of model to use to take a look at opening things up regionally. Um, I think there's a lot to go off of in, in this plan as well. Uh, I believe that there's probably some middle ground to meld the two plans, the WMC plan and then what Senator Roth are working on to come up with a comprehensive idea that we can submit to the legislature. Um, I'll touch on lastly, as I'm sure most of you are aware, the state Supreme Court heard oral arguments um, of the legislature challenging the, the extension of the safer at home order. Uh, primarily our case argues that we are concerned that the governor's administration, along with his DHS secretary designee, went above and beyond the normal rulemaking procedures um, during their safer at home extension order and essentially subverted the legislature and the emergency rulemaking process. We'll see where things go. Um, we're hopeful to have a positive um, ruling either today or sometime early next week. And my hope is, is that it's going to allow the legislature a seat back at the table so we can work with the administration on some of these proposals that are being worked on and hopefully come together in a bipartisan manner. So that way we can provide uh, some real, res real results for the state of Wisconsin and hopefully get us back on the right track. Um, I've been saying all along to my leadership in, in the state Senate that we have to be nimble, we have to be flexible, and I do suspect that we will likely be coming back at some point to uh, tackle more legislation as it relates to uh, the health pandemic, especially as Congress continues to explore options on providing relief for different sectors of the economy as a result of the economic downturn caused by the pandemic. So that's kind of where things stand at, at this point. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone has. If, if not, um, feel free to reach out to my office. I know we've been taking a lot of calls and questions in the last several weeks as it relates to various orders that have come down from the administration. So we're trying to be a resource to individuals and provide those resources as needed. And just know that my door is always open for you. Any questions? I haven't seen any come through on chat. We will just give them another moment in case they're in the midst of typing something. Here we go. Um, can you explain how important it is to support local small business? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's extremely important. And, and my heart goes out to all those small businesses right now who are essentially um, shut down. I, I know when the Sultan started, there was all talk about essential versus non-essential. That's a phrase that I still, I, I can't wrap my head around it because all businesses is essential. Um, for those employees, for that small business owner, whether they're whether their business is deemed non-essential, it's essential to them. It's essential to our community. It provides a, a sense of purpose. It provides an identity for our area. And so it's it, critically important right now to do what we can to help our small businesses. One of the reasons why I am most concerned that if this if the extension remains in place um, stems from a survey that was released last month that showed if this continues on where we're kind of in this holding pattern of a partial shutdown, we are likely going to lose 35% of our small businesses in the state of Wisconsin. And when 80% of our economy relies on small businesses, this is a foundation to, our, to the success of not just our area, but our, our state as a whole. So my, again, my heart goes out to these small businesses. I know it's been a struggle. I know um, just from my wine sales job that I still do on the side, I've taken a lot of painful phone calls from uh, small business owners in, in the central Wisconsin area who have called me practically in tears that they're not able to um, operate. And so that's why we're, we're trying to do what we can to explore options to hopefully get things open back up. I do know um, uh, last week that part of the governor's safer at home order. They rolled back some of the criteria and allowed for some, some practices for small businesses that were deemed non-essential. Again, I hate that term, but allowing for curbside pickup, allowing for um, you know, one-on-one -on -one visits. So there is some availability for small businesses that operate, but by and large, our, many of our small businesses operate on razor thin margins and success can be three or 6%. And with a prolonged extension, um, it makes it very difficult when your revenue streams are coming in at barely barely even a percent. So I know it's difficult, but I'm, I encourage uh, people to help out our small businesses. I, I know the heart of Wisconsin Chamber has been a great resource in providing lifelines. I know uh, the Portage County Business Council has been in the same boat various communities throughout the area have provided assistant loans. So there's a lot of support out there and resources. And if anyone needs help getting in touch with available resources, again, please contact my office and we'll do what we can to get you in touch with the right people. Thank you. Um, we have one more question. Um, is there any relief available for towns uh, for the additional cost of elections? Yeah, I'll, Arnie, I'll have to check into that. I, I believe, as far as I understand it, there there is money coming down from the federal government for cost on elections, but I'll have to double check and um, I'll have my office get in touch with you. Thank you, Senator. That's all the questions that we have here. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. I really appreciate the opportunity. I, I know these are difficult times, but I'm confident that we will bounce back and we'll be stronger for it. Thank you, Senator Tustin. I appreciate your appearance today. Thanks, Mayor. All right, I'd like to give you a, an update on our small business grant. Last, last week, our Common Council approved up to $100,000 to grant small businesses to aid in their lease and mortgage payment. Um, we partnered with the Heart of Wisconsin and they uh, fielded and took the applications in. And as you can see, we, we received 81 applications and uh, they had gone through the first run and uh, now they have turned them over to the city and we're gonna go through them internally. And next week we will, uh, the hope is that everyone that applied will receive funding. And um, so next week we'll get information out and the week after that, our plan is to submit, um, send out checks to cover those grants. Angel, do you have anything further you'd like to add? 
Yeah, thank you, Shane. Um, uh, I just want to thank everyone um, that if they're on the call, if they applied or if uh, you did not apply, um, I, I think that the city supporting this effort is very crucial to keeping our brick and mortar storefronts open here in our local community. Um, we had many different uh, uh, categories of businesses that applied, which was uh, very refreshing. Um, and the, you know, the applicants went from complete closure to um, a large uh, portion being uh, closed. So uh, we're hoping that uh, these uh, applicants um, are really, um, are really, uh, I guess, um, excited to um, have this in. Um, and again, we thank the city of Wisconsin Rapids for um, uh, supporting this effort and letting the chamber help uh, partner with you. Thank you, Angel. Does anyone have any questions? If not, I'll turn it over to Christy at the health department. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being on today. And thank you again, uh, Senator Teston, for uh, leading us off on our call. <clears throat> so uh, the numbers have already been shared already. And um, an even more interesting breakdown was shared from central, the central northern region. But for you all to see as of yesterday where we were at, um, the numbers are up here on the screen, uh, just over 90,000, 93,000 negative test results in the state. Uh, it was just over 9,000 positives. And again, for Wood County specific, 661 negative results and only two positives. Um, both of those individuals are recovered. What I, I want to talk to you guys today about a lot is something that we uh, have going on currently and also have going on tomorrow, which is free testing with our National Guard at, over at the Wood County Highway Department. Um, this testing is being done via nasal swab, uh, so it's less invasive than the tests that most people have been seeing uh, on, on t television, on the news. It's really simple drive through procedure. Uh, folks do not get out of their car. Uh, and both health department employees and National Guard employees are, or National Guard are there uh, doing doing the testing. We have been taking appointments for the tests, uh, but nobody will be turned away if you don't have an appointment. So it sounds like they're really getting people through quite quickly. We had a full, we had a lot of appointments this morning um, and I'm heading over there after our call and we'll have a better idea of how things are going. Um, We've also opened up our, our testing to healthcare workers, law enforcement, and correctional officers as well. Um, so the, the important thing about this is we have 600 total tests that we requested that we can do in our community, which would more than, would, would just double the amount of tests that have currently been done it, it, for our, our county. Um, and there's a number of, of reasons why there's only that many limited number of tests that have been done. And as you guys will remember, if you've been on the calls with me before, there was guidance um, around only testing critically ill and healthcare workers in the beginning due to um, supply supplies uh, and due to um, hospitals working on, on getting prepared for the potential surge, uh, which we've thankfully with Safer at Home haven't seen. We, we have flattened the curve. Uh, we're seeing that at least in, in some of our um, more rural communities. But so I, I wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of this testing going on and, and get the word out. You know, the, the more tests that we complete um, gives us a better picture of what we have in our community. So not only are we pr providing our community with mass testing, but which, which um, so everyone is aware, our health, our health systems um, and our healthcare providers were in, um, notified were asked whether or not they would support us bringing this here and they did um, tell us to move forward uh, bringing this testing availability um, and and it will give us a better idea to know how widespread COVID is in our communities which will then um, play into a lot of what a center testing was talking about earlier which is being able to you know meet the metrics that have currently been um, set out um, in the badger bounce back uh, if we don't have tests and numbers to show what a picture looks like in our community, it's not as easy for us to, to be pushing, um, you know, pushing our, uh, what we'd like to see happening locally. And so please get the word out, uh, spread the word to anyone that you, that you know of, um, it's just really important, but we've got these two days. There's testing also happening in Portage County next week, uh, and there'll be testing happening, I think, in the Northern region for quite some time. So 
again, that's just a big call out. If people have questions for me, I'm happy to answer. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, we have a translation available currently and on site for among, among families and um, for Spanish speaking individuals as well. Um, so just spread the word so we can get those tests, uh, you know, tests done. And the other thing I want to give you an update on is our the toolkit I've been mentioning. As you guys all know, there's multiple kits or multiple resources out there and available. A lot of different counties are sharing different things. And so we had we worked on putting together what we felt was potentially a little bit more of a user-friendly um, uh, toolkit and checklist. Um, the, the northern region or the northern counties are all working together to be able to provide more sector specific checklists. Uh, we know also know the state is working on those, but we felt like we need to just move forward so our businesses have something to, to be able to prepare. That business toolkit will be available very shortly. We received feedback from our local chambers yesterday and are just making, uh, making those edits now and we'll have that available for you all. Um, and like I had said before, it goes into uh, specifics on employee interactions, I have it all laid out here, but um, on-site practices, what to do, um, also policy, you know, sample policy language in there for for you guys to be able to, um, to, to make sure your employees are safe as well as uh, folks coming in, in your doors down the road. And I think that is all I have for today. Do you guys have any questions for me? We did have one question submitted in advance um, asking about should transportation providers allow medical passengers to be tested in their vehicle? So that's a great question. And the answer to that is the only testing that's happening is in vehicles. So it's very, the site is very safe over there. Uh, nobody, nobody comes out of their vehicles at all. So you, you, turn into the highway department and you drive through a lane. Everything is done, the consent is done verbally, um, everything is done with people still in their vehicle. And so my recommendation would be if, if somebody is driving a passenger that, that you would be comfortable enough with them, if, if a window can, be, can go down in your vehicle, that you would be comfortable with them being tested. Um, but I'm not sure if that was what was being asked specifically by this question and then if it was in regards to the testing happening today and tomorrow. Thank you, Christy. I don't see any. Oh, here's another one. Um, Christy, can you touch on the antibody testing? Can you describe this and what the county's capabilities are? Sure. So for clarification, this test to be the tests that are being done today and tomorrow in Wood County and next week in Portage County, yesterday in Clark County are not antibody or the serum testing. They, this is strictly the test to see if you currently have uh, COVID. The, um, we, to my, to my knowledge, currently don't have the ability to test, to do antibody testing. Uh, and what we know right now is that uh, with the antibody testing, you, you would know if you ha had come in contact with COVID, but we don't know whether or not folks can get reinfected. And so I would I would bet that that will be something down the road that will be available. Um, I know it's available in other parts of the, the country right now, um, but we don't currently have any capabilities to do that. And the tests happening today and tomorrow do not test for antibodies. All right, thank you, Christy. I think that that's all we got. So I just wanna open it up to any additional questions folks have, um, and please feel free to type it into the chat box. Um, we did have one additional question that was submitted in advance, which I think that Angel can speak to a little bit. Um, how will you be supporting the sporting world in the upcoming summer? Yeah, thank, uh, thank you for asking that. Um, 
So uh, as we know that the sporting industry and kind of, um, you know, like our aqua skiers and the rafters, um, they're being affected just like all um, businesses and other organizations. Um, our goal is to continue to support them in our marketing and promotion promotion efforts. Once um, the guidelines um, allow for, um, you know, uh, attending events and participating, we're going to do our best to support them and market them and push them out um, into the community and into the region as well to, uh, we just want to be cognizant at this time of um, following the the health, um, health department uh, specifics and um, the safer at home order. Thank you, Angel. I don't see any additional questions, but I'll give you all just another couple of moments here in case you're typing something. Emily, this is Angel again. I just wanted to chime in if there's any other municipalities uh, on the call. Uh, our partnership with the city of Wisconsin Rapids um, is um, a great partnership and we're willing to uh, participate with other municipalities on projects or um, grant uh, processes as well. I've reached out to a number of municipalities, but just in case if anyone else is on the call that has not been reached um, or I haven't had a conversation with, again, the chamber, uh, we serve a, a, a good chunk of central Wisconsin here and we are open to partnerships and ideas on how to better assist and promote the local business community and uh, keep a thriving economy. Thank you Angel. With that we can close our briefing. Uh, watch for next week. I believe it should be an update through an email and uh, Hopefully I'll have more information at that time. Like Senator Tustin had stated that maybe uh, we'll have a ruling from the Supreme Court and a little further direction on that. But I just wanna thank everybody for participating and have a, have a happy, safe, healthy week.